so back on it again, 30 days of spheres in Blender Octane. I'm gonna share this render today. This is the render I cooked out today. Just finished it right now. All the assets I used in this were free assets. Okay, so don't think there's like any paid or anything like that. So let's get straight into the file here. All right, so this is what it looks like in here. And most of you guys, I know you wanna know what my render settings were. So my render settings for this one was fairly simple. 200 samples, uh, 10 on the diffuse, 10 on the glossy, eight on the scattering. And I don't really I don't really have any scattering going. So actually I do, I have a slight little subsurf going on this um, spear here. So I basically started off with the water. I had a water plane here. Let me go ahead and fire up the render for you guys real quick. Nothing special, just basically a plane. And if I go to the shader editor on this, here is the, the material for the water. It's basically just a universal texture with the albedo set to a, like a dingy muddy color. I'm using transmit mission specular. And I also have GGX energy preserve for my BF model. No roughness all the way down to zero. And then I just added a noise texture. Here are the, the, uh, the, the settings for the noise texture. Parlin, Octus 4, Omega 3.8. And then everything else was pretty much stock. And then that got me the look for the water here, okay? Then I had is the ground plane. I spent a little bit of time on the ground plane. I used a free texture that I got from OCC Textures, I think was it called? This was the texture that I used. I used Concrete Dirty. Basically, I used all the maps. Show you guys how to set those up really easy. All right, here. So here is just the ground plane right here, minus the water, just the ground plane. It came out really nice. I liked it. Again, this was a free texture, but basically this is how I hooked it up. I took the Albedo or the uh, Amelie Inclusion, and then I took the normal diffuse, multiplied them together, plugged those into the albedo. Then I took the roughness into the specular, or I took the specular one map into the specular input. Then I took the roughness into the roughness, no uh, map on here, no gradient map or uh, color wrap, or we say. Then I also put the normals in the normals and the displacement. I used a texture displacement and it was a 4K map set this level to 4K. And then uh, everything else on it was pretty much stock. Everything else, normals, no blur four on that. And then plugged it into my texture. And then that was it. One thing, if you want to know how to bring up this texture map, if you go into this button here, octane displacement texture map, you need to have that if you're using any type of image, image texture in your displacement, you have to go put the image texture into this texture displacement map, and then it sends it out to octane. So, and then all of those are being connected to a 3D transform, which is right there. Again, if you hold down shift, right mouse, uh, right click, you can put a little, little team there, right there. If you just super easy. So I just drop that in and connect all of them out, right? So that was the ground plane. I started adding in all of these extra elements. I had a bunch of free elements from my asset library, which was, uh, I think from the free biodome landscaping material thing. GS biodomes or whatever. Well, there's a whole bunch of, it was free. It's the free pack. So I basically used uh, some rocks out of there. I ended up using debris and I think I ended up using also some dry lands. And so if I go ahead and turn those on here, we got some sticks. Then I got these little clumps of low dry grass. Oh, so I did use something from the dry land here. Then I actually had these dead, uh, dead leaves through those on here and some in the background. Then the rocks, I threw in the same rock pattern. And the rocks, you will need to convert all of these materials. It's really easy to convert them. For example, like if I let me just drag in one of these and just put it over here off to the side. So we have this grass element here to convert them. Right now, it's basically an octane or uh, cinema Ford. It's a cycles uh, material, right? This is basically a cycles material. So when you're importing materials from like cycles, what you basically need to do is take out all this other stuff. And like, I know this is the image map. So literally just take the image map, plug it into the base color. And that's the only thing that's plugged in. The rest of this stuff doesn't need, you don't need it for Octane. It's just gonna make the Octane converter get all crazy. So just delete all that, delete all that. I even delete this. So all I basically have is just, and then from here, what I do is just select it. And then I go down to my settings, to the material. And then one of them says converter. And then just hit convert to Octane material, only selected material. Boom, I click on that and, and I think I deleted the material out. That's why it's getting kind of weird here. So I still need the material out. You know? Yeah, material output. I delete that by accident. Ooh, crashed. 
Octane didn't like that, so it totally crashed, but that's all right. I dragged in a new one. Basically come back in here to the shader. And then again, let's look at what we got. Here's the shader input. This is a cycle shader. So delete everything except this, plug this into the base color and then everything else you can delete. So we'll delete that, we'll delete that. We do need our material output out, we need that select all these and then i come down here to material convert right here it'll be under like that convert to octane material tab on that only the selected boom and then now if you look at it down here it's already converted it for octane and it's ready to go and then i can go ahead and view it okay and it's updated it but this one actually has multiple materials that was just for the stem so like for the leaves when you go back up to the material you're gonna have to do it for each each material see here's another one there is the leaves here. And this will be a good example to show you how to convert the leaves because they're probably gonna be a little bit of a transparency, which is going through. So if I look at it here, I see they got a transparent node right here. That means like, yeah, they were gonna, so it can have some transparency. So again, I still just delete everything, plug this straight into the base color. If you don't delete this stuff, it's gonna like, it just won't convert it because it doesn't understand what's going on. Cause there's nodes that's not being, that uh, doesn't have an octane. So then plug this back into the surface okay so there was transparency in this one so for example we'll go ahead and leave like this good now we're going to go ahead to select those scroll down here convert to octane material okay now what we need to do to get the leaves to have some transparency because they're probably not going to have transparency right now watch okay so now what we need to do to convert it for the leaves we'll go ahead we got an rgb and now what i do is typically just push this into the transmission and then i also just put this into the specular like that but then what we need to do is also, I need to bring in a image, go to textures, go to image. I need to bring in an alpha image because this has it's some transparency going on in here, right? Okay, what we need is the transmission properties. There we go, because we're gonna plug it into the opacity, right? But first thing first, I'm gonna actually have to turn this off. We're gonna come in here and unpack this texture. Make sure you have your file saved because it's gonna save the texture wherever your file is saved. So I'm gonna unpackers this right here, use the file current directory where I'm saving everything. Now it made a texture and I'm gonna open up this new one here, the alpha image one. And if we come into textures, here is our texture right there. It's uh, I think it's this one here, grass blade leaves. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And this is alpha, right? And then what we're gonna do is plug that one into the opacity and just plug this one into the opacity. That should work, but it's still looking a little weird here. So what I'm gonna do is probably unplug this one from the transmission. We probably don't need it in the transmission. There it goes, that looks a little bit better. And that's pretty much how you would convert that over. So we basically converted that from, Ooh, sorry, excuse me guys. Quick word from our sponsor. This sponsor is Audio. In my last live stream, a lot of people were asking me where I get my music from. I get music from Audio. Now, Audio just released this new audio originals only. So these artists were only gonna be found on audio, which I'm really enjoying some of these tracks here because again, it's something that's only exclusive to audio. So definitely something you wanna check this out. I also have a link where I'll be able to help you save 70% off your first year subscription. We pay once a year and then you're done. And what's really nice, we got some sound effects also here. When you guys know I do all my live tracking and VFX stuff, a lot of times those do not have sound effects. So I have to find some sound effects and this is the bulk of where I get most of my sound effects from. I swear, I don't know how much stuff I find in here that helps me to just get to add some type of sound design to a lot of the tracks that I do. Super fantastic. I'll have the link down below. I'll help you save 70% off your first year subscription again. Take a look down below. Enough of the jibba jabba. We converted that from a cycles material to back to a uh, octane material. And it's pretty much just like a dead leaf style plant. So that's how we would do that there. All right, so uh, I had basically those little nits and bits added down here to the ground plane, make sure everything is turned on. And again, I just made du duplicates of everything. Really, it's only like four assets that I'm really actually using. The sticks, the leaves, the grass, and the rock. And I just kind of spread them out because in the framing here, I just basically had them in the background. So you can see that's pretty much the frame shot right there. We come in from this angle here and it's kind of like something like this here with those little bit of rocks there and boom, that's it, boom. So just got a little bit of the sticks in here. And if I go ahead and fire up the render on that and then there it is, boom. And then again, HDRI, I'm in the, I'm kind of like in a wooded woodland stuff. So we're gonna need a HDRI to match that. And then I basically ended up using Muddy Autumn Forest. And then that was it. I used that on there, nothing special. 
And then the sphere was the last thing I added to this to the scene here. Let me turn the water back on. The sphere was a little bit more complicated, not too much, but my basic material on the sphere was a half metallic. I got a little bit of metallic and it's like a gray color. And then I went into, let's bring that also up in the render so you can see that quickly. All right, here's the sphere. And basically the material that I'm on using on this is just like a grayish color metallic ball. And then I tweaked the, the film layer right here. This film layer kind of makes like that oil slick, you know, in, in stuff right here. You see on the top here, this color discoloration is the film layer here. So if I can tweak this, you can see it's just different colors right there. Right. So I just basically tweaked that a little bit. I'm using like 6.2 and then everything else I left stock and I, I added a little bit of a coating. Basically, this is defaults to black and I just turned it white to add even more gloss coat on the top because I really wanted you to see the reflection of the HDRI that it's like in the forest, right? So you're really being, you know, like, hey, this thing's in the forest. And then I mix that. I did a mixed material and mix that with a, a specular with pretty much glass. So if I pull this out of here and go here to 100 to go to one, this is my pretty much my metallic ball mixed with a mm, semi-metallic ball with a weird oil slick on it. And it's actually, the other one is not metallic. This one is actually kind of a glass sphere, but the roughness is so bright on it that it's actually, this was actually supposed to be uh, black. I think I messed that up here. That's what I got going. I have those two mixed and this is pretty much straight up just glass GGX again on my energy, energy preserving on my BSDF model GGX and roughness 0.1 and that's it. And then I mixed them together and then I use a fall off map. It's like a Fresnel map in uh, cycles. So when you're looking at it straight ahead, you can kind of see a little bit of both material, um, the materials kind of mixing there a little bit. So if I turn this on and mute it, that's what you see. If I turn it on, boom. So it's really kind of playing with it a little bit. Now I wanted the sphere to have a very minimal material because everything else was so detailed, the ground, there's so much was going on and they just have this clean chromatic ball sphere kind of just hanging out there. So that was the whole idea on that. If you guys want to know about more in depth of how I set up my render settings, take a look at this video here where I walk, walk through all of my render settings. Catch you in the next one. Keep rendering. Peace.